نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل عقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من اخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین اللہم ارن الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعا اللہم ارن الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Today we will start our discussion with verse 83 of Surah Al-Baqarah وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهَ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِخْسَانًا وَذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسَنًا وَأَقِيمُوا السَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّقَاةَ سُمَّ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِنْقُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ مُعْرِزُونَ Allah says, And recall when we took the covenant from the children of Israel, enjoining upon them, Do not worship Allah, and to parents do good, and to relatives, orphans, and the needy, and speak to people good words, and establish prayer, and give zakah. Then you turned away, except a few of you, and you were refusing. Our discussion of uh, verse number 83 of Surah Baqarah continues. We've been talking about the Ten Commandments which were given to the people of Bani Israel. First was having faith in the oneness of Allah. Worship and obedience will be only and only of Allah and for Allah, none but Allah. The second commandment was وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِخْسَانَ which we covered in two sessions. And now the third commandment is وَذِلْ الْقُرْبَى The order is the third right on all of us after Allah's right and after the rights of the parents is the right of Dhil Qurba, the relations of kin. Dhil Qurba, we mean the relations of the kin, our near and dear relatives. Quran in more than one verse, multiple verses and multiple surahs of the Quran explain us the rights of the relations of kin over all of us. Verse number 83 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah highlights and explains a covenant which was taken with the people of Bani Israel and these are the ten commandments which were given to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Allah says, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِخْسَانًا وَذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاقِينَ وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا Allah says, Remember what? With Allah accepted a solemn pledge. A covenant from Bani Israel, worship none but Allah and do good to your parents, to the relations of kin, to the orphans and poor, and speak kindly to all the people. Then in the first verse of Surah An-Nisa, we've already gone through that. And if I revise, it was said, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ Fear Allah, 
in whose name you demand your rights from each other and the bonds and ties of the relationships of kin then in verse number 27 of surah al-baqarah allah while talking about the disobedience the fast sikun at the disobedience allah says who are they allazina yanqizuna ahdallahi min ba'di mithaqihi wa yaqtu'una ma amara allah bihi an yusala wa yufsiduna fil arz ulaika humul khasirun these are the people who are the losers so these disobedients who are the losers they do what allah says who break the bond with allah who break the covenant of allah and then they do what they swear what allah has ordered to be joined what has allah ordered to be joined the relations of king and what allah has forgive for forbidden to be severed is the bonds of the relations of the blood relations and the relations of the womb and then in verse 90 of surah nahl allah has highlighted the three do's and the three don'ts of quran and allah says inna allah ya'murukum bil adli wal ihsan wa itai dhal qurba wa yanha anil fakhsha'i wal munkari wal baghi inna allah there is absolutely no doubt that allah enjoins upon you number one justice doing good or ihsan and spending that is generosity towards your fellow beings and allah forbids you what is shameful and allah says the other three things are told which are the don'ts of quran so these are the highlighted three do's of the quran and then in the verse number 177 of surah al-baqarah where allah highlights the concept of being virtuous the concept of being of piety is what allah says laysa al-birra an tawallu wujuhakum qibla al-mashriqi wal maghrib walakin al-birra man amana billahi wal yawm al-akhir wal malaikati wal kitab wan nabiyyin wa atal mala ala hubbihi zawil qurba wal yatama wal masaqin allah says that true piety or true virtue is not turning your faces towards the east or the west but the true piety or the true virtue is one who believes in allah the day of resurrection the angels the revelations that is the book of allah and the prophets and the concept of piety and the concept of virtue as per the definition of virtue and piety after belief allah says what wa atul mala ala hubbihi zawil qurba wal yatama wal masakin and he spends his wealth for the love of allah upon whom upon the relations of kin for the orphans and for the needy and for the poor so now if i sum up the message of all these four or five verses which i have recited and which i have translated i think i can and you can all of us we can summarize that if we want to fulfill the covenant or the pledge of allah we want to come up to the level of a god fearing person and if we want to obey the do's and don'ts of allah and if if we want to be virtuous and if we do not want to be one of the disobedience then what do we need to do we need to maintain the bonds of the kin we needs to be kind we need to be generous we need to be 
helping. We need to be caring. We need to be loving. And we need to be merciful and good to the relationships of kin. Now, I will be, I will be reading out and I will be narrating a few ahadiths of the Prophet wasallam to make us understand how important it is to maintain the relations of kin and how, how very, very important it is to stop and to refrain from severing the relationships of kin. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reported in Bukhari that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, قال الله تعالى من وصلك وصلته من قطعك قطعته Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah the Rahman says that I shall keep connection with who keeps connection with the relationships of kin and I should severe connections who severs the connections of kin. Similar words are also reported by Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Auf radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Abu Daud and he says that Prophet sallallahu said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the mother's womb in his hand and he addressed it and he said that I am the Rahman. I am Rahman the merciful. And this Rahima, that is the womb of the mother, Allah named it as a Rahima. This is connected with me. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Man wasalaka wasaltahu, man qata'aka qata'tuhu. Whoever will join you, I shall join him. And whoever will break you, I shall break him. When Allah comes to join somebody, he can join him with his blessings, with his bounties, with his Quran, with his guidance. And when Allah comes to break, or when Allah decides to severe somebody, he can cut off his sustenance. He can cut off or he can severe him from the source or from the root or from the channel of guidance, from the connection of Quran. So this is the importance of maintaining the relations of kin. And then Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Hazrat Jubair bin Mut'im radiallahu ta'ala anhu they report in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said La yadkhulul jannata qati'un Whoever violates the rights of kinship shall not go into the into the paradise. La yadkhulul jannah. If Prophet sallallahu has told us that, that the person who is going to sever the relations of kin will not be allowed or permitted to go into Jannah. Do you think he'll be able to enter the paradise? Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Bukhari in Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever wants to increase his sustenance, I suppose we know that everybody would want to do that. Whoever wants to increase his sustenance and that the marks of, it, of his feet remain for a longer time in the world, that is, he lives long. So if somebody wants to increase his sustenance and his worldly, worldly wealth and riches and he wants to have a long life, what should he do? He should be kind and he should be helpful towards his relatives. So relatives and the relationships of kin they are who are responsible and who will be decisive of whether we will be permitted to enter to Jannah, how long we will live and how much of sustenance will we be will we be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who narrates in Bukhari that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling us the way one 
has to maintain the relationships of kin is that the Prophet ﷺ said the one who joins ties is not truly the one who reciprocates a kind act of the relative, but the one who joins the ties is who joins the ties even when the other severs them. So we, if you're just reciprocating, then this is not actually maintaining the bonds of kin. Prophet ﷺ was asked that tell us the deeds which will take us to paradise. And he said, feed the poor and hungry, join the bonds of kin, promote the salam and offer the salah when people are sleeping. When? Salatul Tahajjud. Then you will enter paradise. So maintaining the relationship of bonds will help a bondsman enter paradise and any person who's going to severe the relationships of bond, like a Tulul Jannah. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Muslim that the Prophet sallallahu was asked by a person one of his issues in his dealings with his relatives. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, I have relatives. Now, you must have a keen ear to what I'm going to tell you because this is an issue which many of us might be facing. So he said that, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I have relatives with whom I try to keep in touch, but they cut me off. I treat them well, but they are, they are abusive to me and I am patient and forgiving towards them but they insult me. Now kindly instruct me, what should I do? The narrator says that Prophet ﷺ advised that if you are as you say, meaning that you, whatever you are claiming that you are behaving in this mannerism, then if it is actually true, if you are as you say, then it is as if you are putting hot ashes in their mouth. And Allah will continue to support you as long as you keep on doing this. And similarly, in Tirmizi, there is a hadith that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "What is the way of?" He was asked that, "What is the way of saving our hereafter?" And then Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told the person who asked that. You maintain ties with the one who severed it with you. You give it to one who deprived you and you forgive the one who wronged you. So this is actually the mannerism and this is actually the level we are supposed to maintain the relations like. In a hadith narrated in Bukhari, Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment should maintain good relations with his relatives. So it is a matter of perfecting our belief and faith also. There's another hadith in Bukhari when Prophet ﷺ said that a Muslim is not allowed to abandon or to severe relationship with his Muslim brother for more than three days. So it is not permissible in Islam. And then another hadith, Prophet ﷺ said that if a Muslim severed ties with another Muslim brother for a year, that is for full one year without any rhyme or any reason they are not on talking terms, then Prophet ﷺ said it is as if they have shed each other's blood. Did we realize how how important it is and how forbidden it is to swear these bonds? In another hadith, Prophet ﷺ said, two Muslims who have severed their relationship, when they meet, the one who proceeds in salam will be closer to the blessings, bounties and pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the one who proceeds with salam and lets go his, all his, the thing he was angry on and the thing they were fighting with each other about. And then there's a beautiful promise of the Prophet ﷺ in a hadith that he said that 
when two Muslims, they had survived their relationships of kin with each other, then the one who settles the quarrel, he will be rewarded with a palace. Imagine, he will be rewarded with a palace in the heart, in the center of the Jannah. Allah says, Wasulhu khair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us all understand all this. Help us all remember all this. Help us all believe all this. Help us all act according to all this. So it was, it's not just the words of the hadith which is going to tell us all this. I'll be narrating some incidents of the Prophet Sallallahu Sunnah as well. How did he behave and how did he relate with his relations of kin? We see the Prophet Sallallahu praying for his relatives. He used to pray for Hazrat Hamza anhu, to embrace Islam. He used to pray for his uncle Hazrat Abu Talib to pray to accept Islam. And then his his cousin, his paternal cousin, Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas, anhu, who was the son of his uncle, Hazrat Abbas, anhu, he prayed for him. And so many, so many times did he pray for them. When he was born, Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas, when he was born, his mother came and she put the baby, laid the baby in Prophet Sallallahu lap. And then he prayed for him. Allahumma faqihu fiddeen. O oh Allah, bless him with the knowledge of the religion of Islam. Then when Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas, when his father migrated from Mecca to Medina, on receiving them, Prophet ﷺ hugged him tight, held him close to his chest. And he was he was supplicating, Allahumma faqihu fiddeen. O oh Allah, bless Abdullah bin Abbas with a deep-sighted knowledge and comprehension of Islam. Then, a night when he was staying with the Prophet Sallallahu at his home, he got up at the time of Salatu Tahajjud, then, then he held him close to his chest and he prayed, Allahumma faqihu fiddeen. And you know what? The supplications and duas of Prophet Sallallahu for Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas were accepted. And he was called as the Hebrew Ummah, the scholar of the Ummah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that is what we need to do for our relatives, pray for them. Because you know the best, the best gift a Muslim brother can give his Muslim brother is the gift of a dua, the gift of a prayer or a supplication. Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so loving and caring and kind and protective and tolerant and merciful to his relatives. I I can narrate that incidence of the Prophet Sallallahu with one of his uncles after the Battle of Badr. In the Battle of Badr, there were 70 Makkans who were killed and there were 70 who were taken captives. And one of them being the uncle of Prophet Sallallahu Hazrat Abbas Raziallahu Ta'ala and who he had not accepted Islam till then. And the companions narrate that it was the night after the battle that we were we were observing that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not comfortable. He was restless. That is he was just turning and tossing and couldn't just sleep. And we asked him that what was the matter and why was he so upset? And Prophet Sallallahu said that it is because I am I'm getting upset because I I am listening to the moaning and the cries of my uncle Abbas and they are making me restless and upset. I would stop here. I would stop here and and tell you who he was. An uncle, an uncle whom Prophet Sallallahu had been inviting for belief and for faith and had been inviting him towards Islam for the last so many years and he had rejected the invitation of his nephew 
Not only this, that he had not just accepted the invitation of Prophet ﷺ for embracing Islam, he was among his bitter enemies. From all the way to Mecca, he had come with the Meccan army to fight, to actually fight with the Prophet ﷺ, his companions. This uncle, when he is crying and when he is upset, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is upset and he can't sleep. He's sleepless. We just need to stop and think. What are we doing? Where do we stand? Do we know? Do we know who of our relatives is upset? Do you, do you or I, we know? Are we trying to find out or are we aware of who amongst our relatives of kin have been crying through the night? And if, if we know that any of our relatives is upset, then how upset are we? How sleepless have we been because of the anxieties and tensions and distresses of our relations of kin? And then we claim, we claim to be the people of the Prophet ﷺ. We look forward to the intercession of the Prophet ﷺ on the day of resurrection. Prophet ﷺ was so upset and the companion said that what we did was that we just let Hazrat Abbas loose and we opened up all the chains. And then obviously he stopped. Immediately did the Prophet ﷺ ask, he inquired, why is he silent now? And the companions told that thinking about your discomfort and your being upset and your anxiety and your sleeplessness, we've released him and we've opened up all the chains. Now remember, what justice, what remarkable justice Prophet said and he ordered, now either you chain him up or you let loose, or you let loose all the prisoners. This is a remarkable justice. And then what happened the next morning, Hazrat Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and who was all injured and bleeding and all his clothes were torn so the Prophet ﷺ asked the people of Medina, anybody to give him his clothes. But he was very really tall and nobody's clothes would fit him. And has Prophet ﷺ's uncle was given his clothes by Abdullah bin Ubayl, the leader of the hypocrites, because he was tall also. And then you know what happened? After quite a few years, when Abdullah bin Ubayl died, his son came over to the Prophet ﷺ and he requested him to give his shirt for the coffin and for the funeral of his father, fearing about his father's hypocrisy and fearing about his life after. He asked, he requested the Prophet ﷺ to give his shirt and Prophet ﷺ took off his shirt. And there was Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he said, Oh Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are you going to give your shirt to a person who was a hypocrite, who was the leader of the hypocrites? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Umar, don't you say that. You know, Abdullah bin Ubayi gave his shirt, gave off his shirt to my uncle Abbas when nobody's shirt would, would fit him. What is this? This is open-heartedness and open-mindedness. And this is acknowledging the goodness and the kindness of a person. And not just only acknowledging and accepting and mentioning and talking about the kindness of somebody, but in fact, repaying and returning the kindness of the person who was kind to us. And more so, Prophet Wasallam is trying to repay the kindness of a person who was kind to his relatives even. What are we doing? 
there are times in our life when we get so when we get so hard hearted and we get so tight Allah said wa may yuqashha nafs fa ulaika humul muflihun we get so tight hearted and so narrow minded that we we stop acknowledging what kindness anybody has done to us let us aside repaying the kindness we don't even we don't even have the heart to accept to acknowledge and to mention the kindness somebody did to us this is the model of excellence of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then i read about the conquest of makkah when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is riding the camel the she camel and he was entering makkah can you imagine who was sitting behind him this was like one of the biggest days the biggest success in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 8 years after migrating from makkah he is walking in as the conqueror of makkah couldn't have been a bigger achievement couldn't have been a bigger day of success for him and behind him on his she camel is who the son of hazrat abbas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu his paternal cousin this is the message of what and how we are supposed to relate to our relatives and we see in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam him giving importance to his paternal relatives conquest of makkah prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is in his house the house of hazrat umm hani radhiyallahu ta'ala anha and she walks in and she talks to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and explains her situation that she has given shelter to one of the few makkans but but her her brother hazrat ali radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he is taken out his sword and he is hanging them on their heads and he is saying that he is going to cut off their heads he is going to behead them and help me because i have i have given them promise i promised them to give them shelter prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whom o mehani has given shelter we have given shelter we shall provide shelter to the person whom um mehani has promised to provide shelter teaches us the importance of women in islam prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had the patience had the time to listen to a muslim woman he had patience he had the time he had the tolerance this was like and this might have been like one of the most busy days of his life but he had the patience and the tolerance and he gave enough the time to listen to listen to his she cousin and he would honor her he would respect her there are so so many incidences in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he is being seen giving importance to his paternal relatives but today very very pathetically what i highlight that moms of today what they are doing is that they they try to pump their children against against her in laws believe you me this mother this mom who is pumping their children against her in laws in envy in hard feelings is the worst enemy of her children the mother the mom who develops a feeling of hatred who is developing and who is instilling hatred in the hearts of her children against her grand parents their their paternal grand parents the sole purpose of whose life is now to pray for their for their grand children the worst enemy of the children is their mother who is poisoning their minds and their brains against the paternal aunts and uncles the sincerest relationships on the earth why can we get sincerity can you buy love out of money 
And then we see the Prophet ﷺ not only relating to his maternal or his paternal relations of kin, we see him being good and kind and polite even to his in-laws. Hazrat Isma radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was his sister-in-law. And there's so many times when he used to go to her house, he used to advise her, he used to instruct her. There, there, there's an occasion when he's talking to Hazrat Isma and he's, she was spending and she was taking out the money from her kitty and then she was, then she was counting the remaining and then she was counting what she was going to give. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam instructed her to be generous. Stop counting. Allah will stop counting. And stop stopping. Allah will start stopping. So instructing her to be generous. Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar, Hazrat uh, Isma radiallahu ta'ala anha was the sister of Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and she was uh, Prophet sallallahu sister-in-law. And then Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was the brother of Hazrat Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha and the son of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he was the brother-in-law of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa We find so many times that he is coming over to the house of his sister and visiting the Prophet ﷺ and we we go through a, a hadith in Bukhari when Prophet ﷺ was asking him to start reciting, to start offering the Salatul Tahajjud. And then in Bukhari we see, we read of an occasion when Hazrat Maimuna radiallahu ta'ala and has nephew Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas is staying over for the night when Hazrat Maimuna radiallahu ta'ala and has was she was having a turn of the Prophet ﷺ staying at her place. So this is the open-mindedness. This is the love. And this is the justice. And this is the kindness with all the relatives. Now, before I proceed, I would want to highlight and I would want all of us to understand that who actually are the relations of kin. They are our blood relations. They are the relations by the womb of the mother, the mother, the father, brothers and sisters, uncles, aunts, may they be paternal or maternal, and the nieces and nephews. So these are the relations of the kin which I'm talking about or the Quran is ordering us about. The next we all need to understand, I'll be highlighting a few points that how do we need to relate and behave with them. First of all, we need to spend on them, give them our hard earned money. It is an order of the Quran. As I just recited the ayah, وَآثُ mala ala hubbihi dhabil qurba giving them money, spending on them, being generous on them, just sheer out of the love of Allah to the relations of kin. So this is an order of Allah. And Allah says, as we read, we just went through the verse number 90 of Surah Nahal, Itai Dhal Qurba is one of the Do's of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, وَآتِ ذَا الْقُرْبَى حَقَّهُ That give your relations and your relatives as if it is their right. It's as if it is their due right. So what do we give? We give them the zakat. We give them zakat. If any of our relatives of kin are needy and secondly righteously deserving of zakat then the first right of anybody's zakat will be for his relations of kin when it was asked in surah bakara yasaluna kamaza yunfiqun they asked what must we spend and whom must we uh, must we spend on yasaluna kamaza yunfiqun Allah said, spend on your parents, on your relatives of, and your relations of kin. So if they are needy 
and they are duly and rightly deserving of zakat also then they have the first right of zakat now here i would want to clarify another point as well that there are certain scholars today who are saying that a man cannot give zakat to his relations of kin no it is not so there is a specific circle obviously when whom he cannot which is the circle the circle around a man of the people for whom it is obligatory for him to fulfill their economic requirements like a husband is supposed to fulfill the economic requirements of his wife and her and his children similarly a man is duty bound and it is he's he is it is obligatory for him to fulfill the requirements of his old parents the mother and the father or his sister who is divorced or widowed and she comes back to him so these are the duties of the man and it is obligatory for him to pay for all of these so this circle obviously since it is obligatory for him to fulfill their monetary requirements then he will not be giving zakat to any one of these in this circle but other than this circle outside this circle if it his his brother he can give zakat to his needy brother his uh, poor uncle his deserving niece or nephew he can definitely give zakat to any one of them again i repeat if they are needy and if they come up to the merit of a person who is who deserves zakat and who can take zakat or who can be given zakat but on the contrary a muslim woman who in islam has been allowed and permitted to have property and wealth of her own if she is giving zakat out of her money then a muslim woman as she it is not obligatory for her to fulfill the economic needs of anybody around her she has no economic commitments whatsoever according to islam so since she is not she is not supposed to pay for anybody then if she is paying zakat out of her wealth she can pay to any person a woman can give zakat to her father to her brother to her husband to her son to any any relative around her provided the person is needy and deserving of zakat and it is not my opinion i will narrate a hadith has a abdullah bin masud's wife there was prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sitting with his companions that a companion came and he asked that a woman has asked that she has to pay zakat and would it be permissible for her to pay zakat to her husband's children that is to her step children prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked the person who was questioning that who is this lady he said it is zainab prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam further inquired which zainab the person said zainab who is the wife of hazrat abdullah bin masud radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam understood precisely who she was then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said tell her she can and then he said he added that tell her that if she spends on his children then she will be rewarded she she will have a double reward she will be rewarded two folds one for paying her zakat and spending her wealth in the path of allah and the second will be to support her relatives so a muslim woman can spend zakat on any of the relatives around her but the man beyond that circle which i have explained can definitely give zakat and allah when says wa ita idhal qurba haqqahu we have to or we are supposed to give it as if it was their due right now the next thing is that if they are not 
they do not come up to the merit of a person who can be given zakat or who can take zakat then if they are needy and they are in an economic crisis then we can give them the supererogatory supererogatory charity or sadaqat which is beyond zakat and if they are not even needy and they do not need our zakat or sadaqat and they are affluent and they are affording even then we spend on them and we spend to give them gifts for prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said tahabu wa tahadu you interchange gifts to increase the bond of love love amongst each other so exchanging gifts give them gifts so this was the first thing which we need to do with our relatives giving them money in any form or the other then giving them time we need to give time to our relatives in the world of today we have time for everything in the world going about in the shopping malls doing winter shoppings going about dining out hoteling out eat as much as you can and what not going about socializing to our friends going about see the world but in the world of today in the selfish in the conceited in the egoistic in the self-centered world of today we don't have time for our relatives give them time give them importance like the incidents of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you've heard give them time give them importance pray for them make dua for them this is the best gift just think when was it when was the last time i actually prayed for my brother or for my sister or for my niece my nephew my uncle or my aunt the way i pray for myself the way i pray for my son or my daughter the way i pray for my husband that is the way we pray for our intimate family do we ever take out time so we need to pray for them and remember them in our prayers and our duas and our supplications then we need to give them what are we giving them number 1 i repeat again give them your money give them your zakat give them your sadaqah give them give them gifts give them time give them importance give them dua and give them advice give them your heart felt sincere advice give them guidance be sincere to them give them your help give them your support give them your love give them your care extend helping hands be caring be kind be loving be generous be tolerant be patient and be merciful but do not do what these were the do's i said this was the list of do's we have to do with the relatives and now the list of don'ts do not misbehave do not mistreat do not be ill tempered do not be bad mannered do not make fun of them do not call them with bad names do not slander do not backbite do not dishonor them do not hurt them there are so many hard and cruel things a relative can do to a relative we do not have to do any one of that we have to put a stop to all of those <coughs> allah help us remember all this help us remember the importance and help us believe the importance of all this help us adopt all this help us adopt all the do's and help us stop ourselves and help us refrain from all the don'ts 
Help us be merciful and kind and polite and soft-hearted and generous and sincere and loving and, and caring and merciful to all those relatives around us.